Hi guys and welcome back to Game of Muscle videos. Now this video is going to absolutely blow your minds. Uh, it probably won't, but you can pretend it will because what we're going to do is uh, go through the settings in Assetto Corsa uh, and what's a good way to set up your wheel. Now uh, it's nothing fancy, in fact the defaults will pretty much do, but we'll go through everything. For those of you that maybe you've just got into sim racing, you've just got a VR headset like the... Uh, the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift and you, you want to know how to set things up. So we'll do this and we'll do it in a, in a somewhat sexy way uh, because that's the only way to change menu settings and keep people engaged. So first of all, when you go into AC, you'll see options and you'll, you'll see the control button. You want to click on that and you're going to want to uh, bind your steering wheel axis. So we'll do that first. Make sure your profiler, we're using the uh, Thrustmaster T300 here, is set to the same as this value here, which is 900 degrees. And 900 degrees... Uh, I like to use because a lot of games default to 900 degrees and 900 is enough for most cars unless you're driving a lorry or something from the 1930s 900 degrees is generally fine uh, of course games also scale the vehicle's controls uh, and make things line up in general so even if your wheel can't go uh, beyond 900 uh, it, it will generally line up so as we've got it set up axis one is selected because we just move that when we click on it and it's 900 degrees all good throttle we're using separate usb pedals we need to click the invert button to make sure it goes all the way uh, to the end it isn't on so you have to double check that your you know your throttle and your brake and the clutch are all set up correctly you need to all invert these i'm using the, the clutch port v2 pedals if you're using the pedals with the thrust master i don't think you need to invert them but you can see on here um you know what's going on and what you need to change uh, one thing I like to do with the clutch which is slightly different and a little bit of a cheat is increase the sensitivity um, all the way down and what's nice with the Club Sport V2 pedals is they have a, a bite point in them uh, so do the Club Sport V3 pedals where it's, so it's called a digressive clutch and all it means is that it's got like a little mechanism on it where as it goes past a bite point it sort of engages which sort of emulates the feel of a real world clutch uh, biting I guess it uh, you know doesn't line up to any car clutch I've used but it gives you a, a, a cue uh, as to when you can shift but what's nice is in your sim you see it's going down oh, and then it's engaged it can help to set this at that point of engagement um, or just just whack it all the way up here so you know you guarantee that the sim can see it because the, the whole thing with clutches and driving sims doesn't really line up when you're using a shifter so it, you just disadvantage yourself having it all the way to the end. I normally have it pretty close to centre, but I guess if you were trying to be as realistic as possible, you'd line it up to the point where the digressive clutch kicks in. Uh, handbrake, I like to bind to a button on my steering wheel. Uh, in this case, I don't think you can bind it uh, on your T300. You might have to use a separate button, but normally in most games, I bind it to my steering wheel. Uh, you don't really need a handbrake unless you're doing drifting in the set of Corsa. Um, what you can do, I think, is bind it to a separate controller, but we've not got that set up. So we're just going to ignore that for now and uh, leave it... Oh, no. No, it's not letting us do. We're just going to leave it empty. Lonely, empty handbrake. But the, that's the throttle and the steering wheel all set up. The shifters, we just need to add an upshift there and a downshift here. And then we're going to use the separate shifter. We're using the SHH shifter. And we're just going to go through and add the gears in. There we go, sixth gear and a reverse, and that's that all set up. What's nice with the SHH is you can uh, flick a switch and then put it in a sequential mode uh, if you wanted to use the, you know, as a separate sequential shifter instead of using the uh, flippy shifters on here. But as you can see, that's all set up. Uh, gear shift debouncing, uh, I think it stops you accidentally double, double shifting. I'm not quite sure. I'm not really fiddled with it. I've not really had any problems with it, so it's not been an issue. Um, so, let's go to the secondary settings. We've got the brake balance. What, on the T300, I'm using the uh, 458 uh, rim. I believe that's what it's called. Probably getting the names mixed up. Uh, I like to set my brake balance on the Manatino switch up and down because it's really handy if you're just in a car. You can just flick it with your thumb. I'm not sure how clearly you can see that on the video, but you can just flick it up and down. Uh, I normally uh, have the DRS as these bottom buttons it doesn't really matter you just you know you just do it to what you like what's really handy though with uh, vr and don't forget this because it's really useful uh, especially with the way that ac set up for vr is glance left and glance right uh, a band now i put these on the two top left buttons if you've got a g29 or something you could just put it on any button you want but if you push both of them when you're in the car if you push both buttons at the same time it centers the camera so it's really useful 
uh, you know, for recentering the camera as you're driving or, you know, if you launch the game and it's, it's off centre. But it doesn't work in the pits. It only works when you're in the track on the car or in the car on the track. Um, they've added since the update, because of the Formula One car, some of the vehicles having a, basically been a supercomputer with wheel sellotape to it, a whole bunch of, you know, KERS, ERS... ABS, well, you've got the ABS traction control. You can tweak all that with your steering wheel. I prefer to have that on my uh, on my keyboard. Uh, I've got a dead space button box. I've not plugged it in because we're resetting everything up with the green screen. But if you've got a button box, that's the kind of thing that's useful to put on that. But, you know, you get to the point where you're going to look like some kind of 1940s programmer <laughs> just driving your car. No wonder the modern Formula One drivers have like a mental breakdown needs to be told what to do because it, it just gets ridiculous. Uh, and with VR, the best thing is to keep it simple, I find, and, you you know, map the core functions to your steering wheel. I think what will be nice is in the future, uh, when, when you get new rims coming out for these wheels, if they, they start putting more buttons on the wheels, especially with custom wheels, you can get, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, with VR, it'd be nice to just have the buttons on the wheel, so it's all there for your hands, basically like a Formula 1 steering wheel with nice tactile buttons. So we've got that set up there. It's quite a good idea to save your pros uh, where, where you've got to as you go along so you don't accidentally uh, remove it. So we just do that, type that in the bottom, save, save current, there we go, so that's saved that. Um, advanced, you get into the force feedback settings. Now, uh, what you generally want to do, what I find better, is to leave the gain on 100. You don't want the filter on at all. You don't want the minimum force on at all. Some people like it on 1% with the T300 and uh, T500. And different wheels, it varies. I'm, I've been fine with it on zero, to be honest. And if you start putting minimum force values on, you can, you can get like a little lump in your force feedback on your wheel. Again, it depends on the wheel you're using, but I put it on zero with the T300. Uh, curb effects, you know, to be honest, this is all like down to your personal preference here. Um, I think it can sometimes help to have a small amount of curb effect so that there's times when the your, your, your basic force feedback in terms of the physics force feedback and what's going through the tyres doesn't pick up that you're going over a curb. And so you might not notice if, if you're not looking or paying attention that you're actually hitting a bit of curbing and you might just want a little bit of feedback. And if you put a small amount of rumble on there for when you hit curbs, you get that feedback without it impacting the other aspects of the force feedback. So it can be fine to have a little bit of that on. It doesn't matter, really. I mean, if you start going crazy with it, it, w it will actually impact the quality of the force feedback. But if you're only putting a little bit on, it doesn't really matter. Anything below 50, it's, it's, it's just preference. So it doesn't make any difference. Uh, road effects and slip effects. Again, it might depend car to car, and it might depend on your personal preference. Um, I generally have the slip effects fairly low. I put the road effects on a tiny bit because it, what it does is it magnifies the sort of texture of the road and gives you a bit of vibration feedback for the bumps on the road, which can sometimes describe why some tracks or some bits of road are a little bit less grippy or the car's a little bit, little bit offset. And, and it can sometimes just immerse you a bit more in the game, having a little bit of vibration through your steering wheel. Again, you want to keep these effects generally low because the higher you go on them, the more chance there is that you're going to be drowning out the core effects of the force feedback in terms of uh, the, the core effects would be the self-aligning. So, when, you know, when the car is trying to straighten itself up and the car is trying to point itself in the direction of least resistance, the direction it wants to go, that's a self-aligning. Uh, and you use that, that, that is core. That's what you use to work out what the most efficient or best way to handle the car is. Uh, and also you've got the, the, the snap correction as well. Uh, where the car, again, is just straightening itself up and sort of communicating what the, the physics and the nature of the car are doing. You don't want to drown those force feedback, um, that, that force feedback out with any of the effects. So in general, just keep these low uh, and it's, it's kind of up to your preference. Slip effect is a funny one because uh, it's varied in versions of the game. On this latest version of the game, I don't think you particularly need it. Um, and... It varies from car to car how, how much slip effect affects it and if it's positive or, or negative. Um, again, you might just want to fiddle with it. I, I generally have it on pretty much off. It's fine. Anything up to 30% it don't, doesn't seem to really matter to me. Um, but each update they do, it's probably worth having a little look, see if, see if there's something there that um, tickles your fancy. Um, a, a, a enhanced understeer effect. I went into like a brain stutter there because this if, in, this enhanced underfear, understeer effect is uh, don't tick it. <laughs> we'll try it out. Give it a go. I mean, you pay for the game. You might as well use what's there. Give it a go. But what it tends to do is it, it's, I think it scales the force feedback all into if the tyres have grip or not. 
the problem with that is it's, it's I'd say it's too aggressive and um, as a result if you start going over the limit a tiny bit where sometimes that's beneficial you, you lose all force feedback feel and uh, again it gets in the way of actually communicating what the car's doing and can make your cars feel a bit light in the sim or a little bit artificial so I just have it ticked off you might want to try it there's no steadfast way of uh, having your force feedback set up it's, it's it's just up to your personal preference. You're doing this for fun. Um, I don't know what combined with keyboard input is. I guess you can combine the controls with the keyboard input. We've ne never used that, and that's an option that's appeared more recently. Uh, steering settings, gamma is 1, filter 0, speed sensitivity 0, brake gamma 1. It depends, actually, with brake gamma. If you're using a load cell brake, in, in this case I am, um, you, you want it linear. But if you're using a, um, a, a potentiometer brake, so the brakes that come with the G29 on the and the T300, even the T300, I think it's the G, not the GT wheel, but the, there's a there's the Alcantara wheel comes with a clutch and a brake and an accelerator. Even that uses um, a poten potentiometer. I'm going to get these mixed up, but it uses the one where it's basically distance based rather than pressure based. So if you've got a pressure-based brake in that it measures pressure rather than distance, you want it linear. If you've got a brake that measures the distance that you're pushing it down rather than the, the weight that you're putting on it, you might want to put some, um, uh, some brake gamma on. And what that means is that initially the brake, you can push it down without much effect, but as you get to the end of the brake pedal, it increases in sensitivity. So again, that's going to be down to personal preference as to what works well, for you, uh, it could be a bit of trial and error. Personally, even when I had um, the, the distance-based brakes, I generally kept it linear and just got used to that. Uh, and, and really, when it comes to braking, accelerating and what have you, the key thing is going to be having the same thing that you go to. So it's always the same, and then you're learning something that's always the same. If you keep changing stuff all the time, you're never going to learn it, uh, and you know, you're just making it harder for yourself. So that's pretty much the uh, the force feedback settings uh, and the basic setup of the world. We'll just save this, save current. And uh, in terms of uh, I, what I'll do is I'll go through the Oculus Rift because some people were confused with this. I don't know why. It's really simple if you want to get the Oculus Rift working with um, a set of course. You just go into the options and click on the options. There you, go. you go into the options, you go... On this drop down box, you, you click Oculus Rift and uh, that will load into the Oculus Rift now. And you can also now use um, the uh, effect like post processing effects, but you can also do AA with in virtual reality, whereas you couldn't before. But really simple to get into VR. It's a little bit harder if you've got a uh, if you've got a Vive and not a Rift, you have to drag the revive files across, but then you just select the same thing in the game and launch with Steam VR, and it's you know it's pretty self explanatory. It's not that hard. Um, whilst we're at it, now we've done the inputs and what have you, we'll look at the uh, graphics. I'll just tell you which graphics have the most effect. I don't tend to use the post-processing that much with VR. I've not really fiddled with it. Uh, Kunos recently have fixed the post-processing so it doesn't look like you've lost your eyesight when you, when you put the post-processing effect on, but I need to fiddle with it, so I can't comment on that because I've not actually checked it out properly. But in terms of uh, graphics, in terms of if you want to get the maximum performance with minimal uh, visual impact so it looks good and runs fast the main thing to avoid are the reflections you want to turn them down to uh, uh, normal for the mirror reflections is fine and the reflection quality to low and static that basically means you get reflections at a basic level and they, they visually trick you that there's reflections there uh, but they don't put a, a massive load on your computer if you start putting the reflection quality on on high it's a massive uh, increase in, uh, in 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 chug that it puts on your computer um, AA, of course, uh, is quite demanding, so you might want to fiddle with that, have it off. It'd be quite jaggy with it off. I put it on two, that gets rid of the uh, the jaggies a little bit. Not perfect, but if I do a lot of recording, so I, I like to uh, you know keep the performance up high. Two seems to be a reasonable amount. World detail, it depends from track to track um, how much world detail will affect uh, the the, uh, the performance. Certain tracks for Spa, for example, coming down the hill 
obviously you're on top of a hill looking at a giant environment the developers do do clever stuff with how they remove items and how stuff in the distance is, uses less detail than stuff in the foreground and they, you know they, they try their best but there's certain tracks where you'll come around a corner i think silverstone as well when you come around the grandstand the, the, the rest of the track is practically empty and then the grandstand there's all this crap everywhere and all this geometry so even if the d developer cuts down on it there's not much they can do to you know to make it uh, even performance around the whole track so you might want to test uh, on a track with other cars uh, there different world detail before you race online for example to see what frame rates you get uh, it's going to depend computer to computer shadow resolution is another one that uh, has a big um, impact on performance if you have it on ultra it's very negligible in quality to high yet it, it uses a fairly large amount of processing medium I, I find looks fine in terms of the car shadows look good um on medium some of the external shadows can look a bit jaggedy and it depends how uh, obtuse or uh, acute the, the the sun and the, the shadows being cast are uh, as to how good the shadows will be again that will vary from track to track but uh, medium you get good performance and you get basic shadows it looks pretty decent um one of the things with AC is I think it uses a different uh, resolution shadow renders for the internal cockpit of the car. So even on medium, the internal cockpit shadows look fantastic, um, whereas the uh, the external shadows use a, I think it might use a different system or be a different resolution. Uh, so on medium, the internal cockpit shadows look fine, but the external ones look a bit rubbish. Um, but, you know, that's the price to pay if you want to play with uh, lots, lots of grids and you're using VR and your computer is not an absolute beast. So, uh, will detail high, shadow resolution medium, uh, effects, smoke generation can um, slow down your computer on ultra, especially if there's lots of cars all, all um, spinning the wheels on the start finish line at the beginning of a race, um, that will slow down your computer. So you might want to put smoke generation on low, but if you're just doing drifting with two or three friends, then you might want to turn it up a bit. So it depends what you're doing again. I, I just put it on low because I don't... Well, I put it on normal and low. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me that much because as long as you've got smoke generation on, the, the useful aspect of it is if someone's done a spin on a corner around a blind corner, you might catch the smoke. So it gives you a clue as to what's happened up front without actually seeing the accident. So it's worth having on, but on the lower settings, it's totally fine. Uh, show smoke and mirrors you can turn off because you don't need to see the smoke in your mirrors and that's the kind of situation if you're really fast such as myself you know i'm always qualifying at the front of the grid uh, if you've got smoke on in your mirrors and the whole grid is spinning up at the start of a race you might get some slowdown at the start uh, which is a time in a race where you don't want any slowdown especially in vr um as i said post process and effects uh need to fiddle with that but your mileage might vary in general though the post process and effects shouldn't have that much of a performance difference uh, other than this uh, overall overall quality on them after you set the overall quality the general changes shouldn't make much, shouldn't that much of a difference because they're sort of the, the process has already been done it's just altering the image that's coming out after you've after, aside from this overall effects quality i might be wrong on that but i think that's the case so um view uh, it's with vr you know it's all one-to-one -one. field of view is not that important years ago we did a video on field of view but you know we're moving on from screens now um reflections being through that but that's uh, that's about it really that's that's uh, setting up your steering your force feedback um and your graphics the only uh, the only last thing remains to say is make sure in your profiler for like your logitech wheel or your t300 i don't have a, the, the recent logitech wheel we've got a g25 I've not used it for a while now um in your profiler make sure as i say that your wheel is set up to 90 degrees make sure there's no dampening on your wheel um in, in your profiler because dampening is pretty much universally terrible it, it will just make the simulation worse now i was going to go there but there's one last thing when you go to your car and you're actually on the track because you've set the force feedback presumably the gain to 100 percent like we said uh you know you might have set it to something you like but assuming you set it to 100 what you'll find is that some cars okay this is might be running a bit slow because uh, i'm doing like multiple captures some cars will start clipping so what you want to do is you've got this pedal meter on on the screen here and that shows you what's going on with your pedals the the green one's the accelerator red one's your brake blue is clutch and the one to the right is the force feedback now this isn't 100 percent reliable and you might want to use external apps but it's, this is reliable reliable enough to get a general idea and you, you'll be able to feel it when your force feedback's clipping basically 
when you force feedback clips, you start losing any like nuanced textures. You'll just get a solid sensation through the, through the steering wheel, a constant force without any difference in the forces. So it's not really telling you anything other than, oh, turn the steering wheel left and right. But the whole point of force feedback with modern wheels is that you actually get a nuanced uh, gradient to the force feedback, which communicates uh, how much load is on the tyres, what the car's doing, and how to respond to that, uh, you know, and how to drive faster. Now, if the wheel is clipping or the force feedback is clipping, you want to make sure you've got the force feedback controller on the screen here, which you get in the apps. I don't know if we'll be able to get this to work. But if you go on the right, oh, there we go. Um, you go on the right, you, you can scroll down the apps and there will be a force feedback app. Let's find it. Onboard settings. Well, we already have it on the screen, so it should stick out like a sore thumb. There it is, the force feedback controller. So you'll want to click that, and then what you'll get is this little window, which doesn't draw properly in VR, so you won't be able to see the numbers properly, just to make things more fun and exciting. And you'll want to check if that's clipping or if you can feel it clipping through your steering wheel. And if it is, you just turn that down. Now, this is for each car has its own force feedback setting, and you'll want to have it. So basically, the force feedback is generally as strong as it can be or as high on this force feedback control as it can be before there's clipping um, and you you know you change the value by pressing the plus and plus and minus normally they're at 100 percent and normally most cars will have some clipping with a t300 at 100 percent gain so you'll probably want to click it a few times get it down to around about 90 or 85 percent it depends from car to car uh, but then once you've done that you know you'll be able to drive you'll be able to feel what's going on and you'll be a happy little sim racer wondering why you've spent so much money on virtual reality uh steering wheels and uh, and everything else and uh let's just quit off this exit that uh, and yeah so the that's the path that's the path to happiness in terms of setup so I know that's not the most, this isn't the most exciting of videos, but maybe it's helped some people. Uh, and, you know, uh, if you've got any of your own tips or you think I've got something wrong, put it in the comments section. I'm not perfect. I probably have said something wrong or messed something up. So it would be worthwhile putting that in the comment and let people know, explain it clearly, what you do, why you do it differently, so people can decide what they want to do and why. Uh, but there you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the subscribe button, like it, and uh, I will see you in the next video we do. Until then, goodbye.